Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, man. I'm just uh, just uh, excited to be with you uh, today. Hello. Hey, I'm Pastor Wynn. Hello. Good morning to you. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful day, man. I'm just excited all God's going to do today. So, man, if you want to join with us uh, this morning, uh, I'm just going to put this out there. If you have a prayer request, just type it in the comment section this morning and uh, we're going to pray. Uh, for your prayer request. I want you to know this. Um, we we have some main avenues uh, for your prayer request to come to us. We have a, a prayer card on our main website at famharvestchurch.org forward slash prayer. And when you get to that page, there's a, you know, various different ways you can submit your prayer. If you uh, are connected with us with on our text uh, blast, you can always respond to that. Uh, that funnels through as well. And then if you, of course, if you have my phone number or you have a church phone number, you can you can text a uh, prayer request that way. Um, one of our, our core values is praying for one another. And so we have a, a prayer team that's dedicated to pray uh, over your prayer request. Uh, far be it for me to be a I told you so uh, kind of guy. I, I, I do want to share my heart with you and why. Um, I preach the way that I do, the way that, why I teach the things that I do. Um, it's kind of a, I've experienced some things in, um, in life that I don't want you to experience. And I have experienced some things in life that I do want you to experience. And so uh, it comes out of that wisdom of uh, trying to help you avoid some pain points in life and to live a full abundant life here. Now, did you know Jesus didn't just die for your salvation? He did die that you would have salvation, that you'd be justified unto the Father. Uh, he went to the cross. He conquered the grave for that very reason. But he also uh, did it so that you would find freedom, freedom from sin, that you would also uh, be restored, be redeemed. Uh, and that you'd also live a life of abundant and purpose, abundance and purpose. Uh, most people don't know that, uh, and they think that salvation is the end game. Man, uh, salvation is the first step into a life of fulfillment in Christ Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you. And so some of the things that we talk about on a regular basis, this, the values that we uphold at Family Harvest um, is being is, is, is valuing the gathering. Uh, that gathering includes large gatherings, small gatherings, and mentorship, mentoring people and being mentored, and then self-guided study. The reason that I share this with you uh, is because I know when one of those foundational principles, those four pillars, if you will, are missing, you are struggling. When people have things going on in their lives, that they would rather keep from the public eye, the scrutin scrutinizing eye, the, the church judgmental eye. I know that is a, a, a big issue with people. They don't come to church because they think the church is judgy. When they feel that way, they will avoid one of those pillars. They will avoid the large gathering. They will avoid the, large, the small gathering. They will avoid uh, mentoring someone uh, or, met or being mentored. They will avoid self-guided study. I, I, I know several people that have like they've gotten saved. They've gotten uh, into the word of God. They get upon something in the word that that, that is hard for them. And they go, God, I'm going to trust you in this. And then they have to make an adjustment in their life or they're called to make an adjustment in their life. And they don't like the adjustment because the, the adjustment take the Holy Spirit is prompting you to something great by saying, hey, I want to do something in your life and I'm going to ask you to adjust here and trust me in this. And they go, yeah, you know, that seems too hard. That's going to cause me some discomfort. It's going to cause some change in my life. And I don't like that. So therefore, I'm not going to do it. And and what happens in that case is I read the word of God. I had a head knowledge of what the, the word of God was calling me to do, what the Holy Spirit was prompting me to do but I'm just going to ignore it because I don't like that part. You are avoiding a full health and wellness attitude, a, an abundant fullness attitude, which is what Jesus died for you 
for. He, he went to the cross so that you could have a fulfilled, abundant life now. One filled with purpose. One filled with glory in his name. Oh, my gosh. I could go on and on about this. I, I'm very passionate about this. So when we talk about, listen, don't, don't forsake getting together in the gathering. Now, what does the gathering look like? The large gathering right now looks like it's online. It looks like it's in person right now. And it, it may be some kind of you know bridge between this. And maybe one week you have to be online, an online church. And maybe one week you're, you're in campus, you're on campus. But here, but, but that doesn't even matter because you could be on campus and not be in service. You, you could be on campus and not be in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a, a worship mentality, right? You can be online and be doing 15 other things and not be giving yourself to the time that God has set aside for you. So that is not upholding the pillars of large gathering. You could be in a small group gathering. You could be uh, hanging with a, a group of friends that you trust that maybe you found at the church or, or they go to other churches from the area, but you get together and the pur sole purpose is to encourage each other in Christ and to do well and to share each other's burdens. You know, stuff like, oh my gosh, I was at work this week and this is what happened. You know, I'm, I'm seeking God in this and those kind of things. Or I've got I've got my kids going through this and blah, blah, blah. Or I need you to pray over this or my mom's got this. Sharing the burdens of life. You know why people get into small groups and do that together? Because they have burdens. You know what people often do and they, they think it's a good group of friends. They get together and they'll, they'll drink their, their, their consciousness away. And they think that's solving the problem. That's not solving the problem. That's adding to it. That is not of a godly mindset. Now, this is not an anti-drinking um, uh, uh, word. I, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying that God first. You'll never read in the Bible that says, listen, if you have troubles, if you have uh, uh, burdens, go drink yourself through the bottle. There's no, that's not included. As a matter of fact, it's contrary to that word. So the attitude is of the heart. You see, I can be in service. I can be in a worship service and not worship. I can be in small group and I can keep my burdens to myself. Actually, I can be in a small group setting with friends. I think that are, 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 are for the best for me, that they're, they're cheering me on. And really what they're doing is they're saying cheers. They're celebrating your pain because they're in pain and so they're saying here take some alcohol take some drugs take, take these things it'll it'll give you a, a blip of a moment but it's not solving the problem the, the third thing uh is and is is being in a mentorship you know how you really get down to the brass tacks of what's going on in your life allow someone to speak into your life from with godly wisdom Woo! come on now nobody wants somebody saying hey what's going on in your life right now is difficult what you're doing right now is wrong and you need to repent from it. And here's why you, you want to be found in the Lord in all things. Be worthy of the Lord. And what you're doing right now is not if you if you allow a mentor, a godly man or woman in your life like that. You're basically saying, I want to succeed. I want to win this race. We are all called to know our place, own our space, walk in grace so that we can win this race. Uh, we are here, but for a blip of time in, in the eternity as perspective. And I want to encourage you that these four things are important. And the last thing is self-guided study. People who uh, love Jesus Christ love his word. They embrace his word. They, they cling to it for life, for breath, for existence. Matter of fact, God wrote down what he wanted, to, wanted you to hear today. He wrote it down and it's, it, he's put it in the holy scriptures. If Jesus is your Lord, if Jesus is your Lord, he wrote you a love letter. And it's right here. It's right here. If you're in love with Jesus, you'll love his word. It's, it's that simple. And that's one of the markers of knowing someone that, that's fully devoted to Jesus Christ is, is that they hunger for those four things that they really want to be in. in and, and there's a process. Listen, everybody starts in a process. But if you're missing one of those pillars, your house is shaking and you probably have some turmoil in your life right now. Maybe you have spousal issues. Maybe you have children, parental, parental issues. Maybe you're having jobs situations. But don't be don't be uh, fooled. Even if you have all of those things in place, and you're holding on to those things, you're going through the motions, but you're not letting God uh, into your heart. And all of those, you're not eagerly seeking Him. You will still have difficulty. It won't make sense to you. So we all just want to get fire insurance and know that we're okay, and then we get pissed off at God because he's not doing what we want him to do. Well, that's, he didn't come here to do what you want him to do. He didn't go to the cross 
uh, to do what you wanted them to do. <laughs> that's not, that's not, you missed the whole point. So uh, maybe rewind this video and listen again. Why do I bring all this up? Because today we're praying for workers uh, <laughs> that understand kingdom work. Kingdom work is about God. It's not about us. But man, there's a lot of blessing in kingdom work. And the work is huge. There's a lot of work to be done. But guess what? The workers are few. Great, great story. Jesus tells his disciples. It's called the parable of the sower of the seed. Go and go and read that in scripture. Then put your finger on who you are in that story. Identify with that and then say, God, help me. Help me today, God. So we're going to pray for for workers. And I just want to invite you, if you don't have a church home where you've you know, been hanging out with Family Harvest Church for a little while, you're just gradually coming back. A couple of things you need to know. Number one, we honor where you're at. We understand what you're going through right now in this season. No worries. We're with you. We get it. If you're coming on campus, yeah, you need to know that it's safe. We have done everything that we possibly can. Distancing, we, the staff wears masks. We have hand sanitizing stations. We have an atomizer that actually uh, disinfects the, the whole facility. Uh, between services, before and after each service. And that means if somebody just goes in there for a moment just to work in the back room, those that, that place gets sanitized uh, by this, uh, it's like a fogger. It's amazing. And so uh, we do that in the children's area. We do that in the adult area. We do that in the sanctuary. We do that in the back rooms. Even the rooms that aren't being used, we regularly sanitize. Uh, Clorox has gotten a lot of our money with bleach water. When we wipe down everything. Anyway, that, if that helps you, then come on. If not, that's okay. You can watch online. But be in the service. Don't turn it on and then go do the dishes. Right? Sit and, and worship. It's, it's literally less than one hour, and you're going to be edified. So if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're with us, man, really give this, this time that you spend in the Lord. That's what these 21 days are about. It's all really about getting refocused and getting um really honed in on what God wants to do in a unified body at Family Harvest Church. That's why we take 21 days to kind of pray through through these. These are values that we we have at Family Harvest Church that we we work towards. You know, those show up in, in the things that we do. Uh, plan uh, the uh, the uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center. We plan events around fundraising for the uh, Pregnancy Crisis Center. We participate in the actual work. There's, there's, there's folks there that are, are tied to that. Um, the Hope Center Ministries. Uh, we hope to very soon have a women's center where we can help uh, uh, redeem, restore um, those who are far from God, get get plugged back into the body of Christ and make a difference in our community for the kingdom of God. Uh, and we do that through the Hope Center. So we'll be opening a women's center uh, very soon. And we're excited about the support that you've given us. We know that God's in it and he has sent he has sent workers already. So we know those things are happening. That that those are some big things we do locally in our community. Um, I can tell you this through, through it all, we laugh. We laugh a lot. We laugh loud. Loud. We laugh hard. Um, we take the scripture and, and our God seriously, but not one another. <laughs> Often, we're not perfect, but we're chasing after a perfect God. Man, if that, if you're enticed by that, we invite you just to come wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, man, you're welcome at Family Harvest Church. We just want to love on you. We don't want you to, no one should be alone and we want to walk with you. And I don't know if you're into it, but will you pray with me this morning for, for more workers to come and join and link arms uh, for the cause of, of heaven today. Father God, we thank you today that your word says in Matthew chapter uh, 30, uh, chapter nine, verses 37 and 38, your word says, your word says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of, of, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to ask the Lord to send workers. I'm asking you, has God put something on your heart right now that you might be able to join with us and work the fields that God has placed before us? It's a glorious work. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for ruling and reigning. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. And for those of the sound of my voice, man, if they have not yet come to know you, God, let them submit right now to you and say, God, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I accept your son's sacrifice upon that cross. Help him come in and be the Lord 
part of my life. I turn from my wickedness. I turn from my sin. I turn from my wrongdoing and I cling to your righteousness. I give you dirty rags. You give me holiness and righteousness in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I pray this. God, the work that is in the local community here, the region and the nation and then beyond is great. Please, Father God, send workers who would unite with your cause here locally. If it be at Family Harvest Church or another Bible believe and preach and teach in church, send them, God. The work is mighty. We are not in competition with other churches. We are complementing other churches in the name of Jesus. We want to complement the other ministries in our area. You have given our place. You've given us a, a space. You're asking us to move in this space in grace that we would help others as we also run this race. And so, God, we just love you and we thank you for this. On this day, help us to be all that you've called us to be as we all strive to just take one step closer to Jesus. Amen. My Lord, my Savior, my King Jesus name, I do pray. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. I'm a little pumped up. Hope I'm not too much for you this morning. But listen, if you don't have a church home or you've been wandering alone, or you feel alone, come check us out at Family Harvest Church. We're located at 750 Manning Road in Suffolk, Virginia. 750 Manning Road in Suffolk, Virginia. On, uh, on campus, live, in person is 930 right now. We have a 930 and an 1111 online. And then on September 6th, we'll have a 930 in person and a drive in church on the parking lot in person. So you have two services as we gradually move back into uh, more services on campus in person. Man, do not put off the gathering. Do not put off the gathering. It's your first step. Come and enjoy all that God has given. It's a great thing to do as we all take one step closer to Jesus. Lord bless you.